as the sleeping prophet, Edgar Cayce could treat illnesses, predict the future, often accurately, according to Cayce scholars. Edgar Cayce, often dubbed the sleeping prophet, stirred up waves with his unique perspectives on spiritual matters, including his take on Jesus Christ. In one of his most startling revelations, Edgar described what he called a 2,000-year-old lie, challenging traditional views of Jesus' teachings and his divine nature. This controversial insight, according to Edgar, sheds new light on religious history, leaving many to wonder what the truth is. Join us as we talk about what Edgar Cayce just revealed about Jesus, which shocks everyone. The unusual boyhood of Edgar Cayce. Before we start with the story of what Edgar Cayce revealed about Jesus that shocked everyone, let's first say something about his early life. Born on a chilly day in March 1877 in Kentucky, Edgar Cayce was the son of Leslie Burr Cayce and Carrie Elizabeth Major, who made their living farming. The Cayce household was a lively one, bustling with the energy of six children. As a little kid, Edgar claimed he could see the ghost of his grandfather roaming around the farm. Now, most kids might run screaming or think they'd watched one ghost story too many, but not Edgar. He said he knew it was real because the apparition would turn transparent if he focused hard enough. By the time he was 10, Edgar found himself drawn not to the fields of his family's farm, but to the mysteries held within the pages of the Bible. He read it cover to cover 12 times in just two years. His connection with the spiritual didn't end there. One day, deep in the woods in his makeshift hut, Edgar had a visitor, a woman with wings, straight out of a fairy tale, who appeared to him. She wasn't there to scare him, but brought a message in response to his prayers, asking him what he wished for the most. Edgar, quite shaken but honest, expressed a heartfelt desire to help people, especially children. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. The very next night, after a tough day with his stern teacher and a harsh lesson in spelling from his father, Edgar received another mystical tip from his winged visitor. She told him that if he slept on his books, the knowledge would come to him. Desperate to improve, Edgar tried it out. And wouldn't you know it, the next morning, he could recite anything from those books, astounding both his skeptical father and his teacher. Edgar's knack for absorbing knowledge in his sleep turned him into the top student by 1892. But that wasn't all. Edgar discovered another astonishing ability. During a school ball game, after getting hit hard in the back, he began exhibiting bizarre behaviors. One night, he diagnosed his own ailment while asleep and even concocted a remedy that worked wonders. Though this peculiar ability vanished for a few years afterward, it was just the beginning of what would become a lifetime of inexplicable phenomena associated with Edgar Cayce. The Kentucky Years and the Call of Destiny. Edgar Cayce's journey through the early 1900s in Kentucky could easily be mistaken for the plot of a mystery novel. Set against the backdrop of small-town America, his life from 1893 to 1912 was a whirlwind of unusual events, profound struggles, and a deep, ongoing dialogue with the spiritual. In December 1893, Edgar and his family set up their home in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, a place that would witness the awakening of his clairvoyant abilities. With only an eighth grade education under his belt, pretty standard for working class kids at the time, Edgar left the family farm behind in search of work. What followed was not just a quest for a job, but for a deeper understanding of his extraordinary talents. Engaged to Gertrude Evans by March 1897, Edgar was deeply involved with the Disciples of Christ, reading the Bible annually and actively participating in church. This was his way of reconciling his spiritual gifts with his faith. It's no surprise that in his later years, he exposed a 2,000-year-old lie about Jesus that shocked many. He taught Sunday school 
and looked for missionaries, all the while wrestling with whether his prophetic abilities were a gift or a curse. The turn of the century saw Edgar trying his hand at selling insurance alongside his father, but a bout of severe laryngitis in 1900 cut his vocal cords and his career short. Homebound and voiceless, he needed a less vocally demanding job, leading him to photography. 1901 brought a curious twist. A stage hypnotist by the name of Hart, known as the Laugh Man, offered Edgar a potential cure for his voice loss through hypnosis. While under trance, Edgar's voice returned, but it vanished once he was awake. Despite multiple attempts, a lasting cure eluded him until Al Lane, a local hypnotist, figured out a method to increase blood circulation to Edgar's throat. This treatment stuck, and Edgar's voice problems largely disappeared. As his health returned, so did his clairvoyant readings. Word of his abilities spread, bringing inquiries from far and wide, with Edgar claiming he could perform accurate readings just from letters. Initially reluctant, Edgar was persuaded by Al Lane to offer his psychic diagnostic services to the public for free, fearing the consequences if his unconventional methods went wrong. In 1902, Edgar took a job at a bookshop in Bowling Green, where he boarded with young professionals, including two doctors. His engagement with these medical minds didn't just provide company, but sparked a critical debate about the legitimacy and safety of his readings. Still, the privacy of his gift was paramount, and Edgar kept his sessions under wraps. The following years were tumultuous, Edgar married Gertrude in 1903, faced the death of their second child, and suffered the destruction of his photographic studio twice by fire. Yet, these hardships only solidified his resolve. His work with hypnotist Al Lane led to a brief partnership with a homeopath, though it ended abruptly when Edgar realized the commercial exploitation of his abilities contradicted his ethical standards. By 1912, after a fallout with his business partner over misuse of funds, Edgar returned to photography in Selma, Alabama, his psychic work temporarily shelved. Edgar Casey in Selma, Spiritual Insights. Further into Edgar Casey's journey, the period from 1912 to 1923 in Selma, Alabama, marks a fascinating chapter in his life. This was a time when his unique abilities began to catch the wider public's attention, prompting both awe and skepticism. In Selma, Edgar continued to give his readings in a trance state, which had become his signature method. Initially assisted by hypnotists, his wife and eldest son later took over this role. A secretary, Gladys Davis, was brought on board to transcribe his words, which often delved into profound and puzzling subjects. As word of his abilities spread, Edgar's life took on the air of a busy office rather than a mystical retreat. His readings, originally a personal endeavor, evolved into a full-time job. To support his family, he started asking for donations, stepping into his role with a mix of reluctance and necessity. The more famous Edgar became, the more he attracted a motley crew of entrepreneurs, treasure hunters, and even gamblers, all eager to exploit his clairvoyance for personal gain. One cotton merchant, seeing potential profit, offered him $100 a day to predict the cotton market. However, Edgar, staying true to his principles, refused, uncomfortable with using his gift for such purposes. The ethical dilemmas continued to pile up. People approached him with all sorts of requests, from locating buried treasure to predicting horse races. Each request brought him face to face with the moral implications of his work, deepening his internal conflicts. Edgar Casey on the Bible. Finally, we are approaching the question that interests you all. What Edgar Casey revealed about Jesus that shocks everyone. As we delve into the pivotal years from 1923 to 1945 in Virginia Beach, we will uncover how Edgar Cayce's deep spiritual insights reached new heights, often leaving his audience both mystified 
and intrigued. Edgar Cayce's journey into the metaphysical aspects of Christianity began earnestly when he moved to Dayton, Ohio in 1923. In 1923, a pivotal encounter occurred. Arthur Lammers, a wealthy printer with a keen interest in metaphysics, persuaded Edgar to explore topics beyond the usual. Under Arthur's guidance, Edgar's readings took a turn towards philosophical and esoteric subjects, including past lives and reincarnation, a concept not typically aligned with Christian doctrine, which Edgar deeply valued. Arthur was convinced that Edgar's trance statements about past lives confirmed his own beliefs in reincarnation and astrology. Edgar, however, was skeptical of his own readings, shocked at the implications of his unconscious utterances. I said all that? He questioned, unable to reconcile these ideas with his own conscious beliefs. Arthur reassured him, emphasizing that the truths revealed in Edgar's readings were consistent with the underlying truths found in all major religions. Despite his doubts, these sessions with Arthur opened new doors for Edgar both intellectually and spiritually. They sparked a period of intense self-reflection and broadened the scope of his readings. Yet Edgar remained cautious, wary of fully embracing concepts that he could not verify in his waking state. When the Case family later moved to Virginia Beach in 1925, Edgar's work entered a mature phase, marked by the establishment of institutions that would outlive him. Here, he found the space and support to expand his work, thanks to benefactors like Morton Blumenthal, a stock trader from New York, who was deeply influenced by Edgar's readings. Morton's financial backing led to the creation of a hospital and later the Association for Research and Enlightenment, or AIR, dedicated to studying and spreading Edgar's insights. Virginia Beach became a focal point for Edgar's deepening exploration into the esoteric aspects of his readings. His discussions on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ during this period were particularly groundbreaking. Let's find out what Edgar revealed about Jesus and what 2,000-year-old lie we have been talking about since the beginning. Edgar Cayce's unique vision of Jesus. Have you heard about the book that dives deep into the mystical insights of Edgar Cayce, the man known as the Sleeping Prophet? It's called Edgar Cayce's Story of Jesus, and it's penned by none other than Jeffrey First, an author who has devoted much of his career to exploring Edgar's extensive work. This book isn't just a collection of readings, it's a journey into the heart of Edgar's spiritual visions about one of history's most revered figures, Jesus Christ. Jeffrey First, both editor and author, has meticulously compiled over 2,500 of Edgar's readings, all focusing on Jesus. These readings span the 1920s to the 1940s, a period when Edgar delivered a myriad of prophecies and insights not only into health and history, but also into deep spiritual matters. What makes this book a gripping read is not just the content, but how Jeffrey organizes these complex materials into something that both scholars and laymen can appreciate. Edgar Cayce's story of Jesus takes readers on an enlightening voyage through Edgar's unique perspectives. Edgar, who conducted readings in a trance-like state, often touched on themes that strayed far from traditional Christian teachings, including the bold topic of reincarnation. Imagine exploring the life and mission of Jesus through the lens of a man who believed in the vast, interconnected tapestry of past and future lives. Speaking of reincarnation, let's go from there. Get ready, because what Edgar Cayce just revealed about Jesus will shock everyone. The many lives of Jesus, Edgar Cayce's fascinating claims. The first thing that Edgar Cayce revealed about Jesus might make you do a double take. As mentioned before, he exposed a 2,000-year-old lie. How? Well, according to Edgar, Jesus' journey didn't begin in a manger in Bethlehem. No, it stretched way, way back across several lifetimes 
each shaping the soul that would ultimately be known as Jesus Christ. Let's start at the very beginning, or at least as far back as Edgar takes us. Imagine Jesus as Adam, the first man in the Bible. Edgar didn't just see Adam as the guy who took a regrettable bite out of an apple. He viewed him as the starting point of human consciousness and the spiritual odyssey towards enlightenment. Adam's fall from grace in the Garden of Eden set the stage for humanity's epic saga of redemption, which Jesus would later come to fulfill. Next up in this spiritual relay race is Enoch, a figure known for being so close to God that he was whisked away to heaven without dying. For Edgar, Enoch's story symbolized a major spiritual leap. This was a soul mastering the divine walk, laying some serious groundwork for the teachings Jesus would one day offer. Then there's Melchizedek, a real biblical enigma. This guy pops up in the story of Abraham, blessing him, and then just as quickly vanishes from the narrative. No parents, no lineage, just a priest forever. In Edgar's narrative, Melchizedek's role was a precursor to Jesus' eternal priesthood, hinting at a deeper, timeless wisdom that Jesus would fully embody. Fast forward a few generations, and we find the soul incarnated as Joseph, Jacob's favorite son, who went from being sold into slavery to becoming the second most powerful man in Egypt. Edgar saw this chapter as a masterclass in resilience and forgiveness, qualities that would be central to Jesus' later teachings. Each betrayal and setback Joseph faced was a step toward understanding and conveying the power of grace and redemption. Then comes Joshua, known for his role as Moses' successor, who led the Israelites into the Promised Land. And according to Edgar, Joshua's life was about cultivating the courage and faith needed for a much larger role. It was preparing the soul for its ultimate mission, spiritual salvation for all humanity. Finally, all these experiences culminate in the figure of Jesus Christ. In Edgar's view, Jesus was the final iteration, the soul that had evolved through ages, gathering wisdom and deep spiritual insights. His mission was monumental, teach humanity about unconditional love, offer a path to salvation, and lay down his life for the redemption of all. According to Edgar, the soul's journey through these various lives was crucial for acquiring the necessary depth and empathy to undertake such a task. The Essenes and their role in shaping Jesus. Have you ever heard of the Essenes? If you haven't, get ready to be shocked by this claim that contradicts the 2,000-year-old lie that you might have believed about Jesus and his upbringing. Edgar Cayce, the man known for his psychic readings, dropped quite the bombshell when he suggested that Jesus wasn't just a carpenter's son who appeared out of nowhere. Nope, he was part of a pretty intense group known as the Essenes. So, who were these Essenes? The Essenes were a Jewish sect. Picture a group of super dedicated people who lived around the second century BC to the first century AD. These guys took living seriously, like really seriously. They were all about ascetic living, which means they practiced strict self-discipline and avoided any form of indulgence. Not exactly the life of the party, but definitely committed to their cause. They're famous today because of the Dead Sea Scrolls. These ancient texts that were found in the Qumran caves near the Dead Sea. These scrolls gave us a peek into their lives and beliefs which were pretty hardcore. They lived communally, shared everything from food to chores, and followed the laws of Moses to a T their main goal, to live pure lives in order to be closer to God. Now here's where it gets interesting. Edgar claimed that Jesus didn't just grow up with Mary and Joseph in a simple home. Instead, he was raised by the Essenes, who were like the spiritual elite. Imagine young Jesus getting the best spiritual boot camp one could attend during those times. During his time with the Essenes, Jesus would have undergone some serious training. We're talking about a deep dive into scriptures and prophecies about the Messiah. But it wasn't all studying. 
the Essenes were big on purity. Jesus would have taken part in regular ritual baths, fasts, and other practices that were meant to keep both body and spirit squeaky clean. They lived together, shared everything, and supported each other. It was the ultimate training ground for someone whose message was all about love and serving others. What do you think about this claim? Jesus' mysterious years according to Edgar Cayce. However, Edgar did not stop there when it came to shocking claims about Jesus Christ. He spun a tale that fills in a blank period in the life of one of history's most revered figures, those elusive, lost years of Jesus that the Bible skips over. Imagine a young Jesus, not just hanging out in Nazareth, but traveling the globe, soaking up wisdom like a divine sponge. According to Edgar, these were years of intense spiritual apprenticeship across India, Persia, and Egypt. Let's dive into these claims a bit. The Bible pretty much leaves us hanging after Jesus' childhood, only picking up again when he starts his public ministry in his 30s. But Edgar offers a blockbuster twist. Jesus was on the move, learning from the masters of various ancient religions. First stop, India. According to Edgar, Jesus spent a significant portion of his lost years in India, where he studied with Hindu and Buddhist masters. This period allowed him to immerse himself in the rich spiritual traditions of the region. He would have learned about the concepts of karma, dharma, and reincarnation, as well as practices such as meditation and yoga. These experiences enriched his understanding of the divine and the nature of human existence. The spiritual knowledge Jesus gained in India had a profound impact on his teachings. The emphasis on inner transformation, the cultivation of compassion, and the pursuit of enlightenment are themes that resonate with Eastern spiritual traditions. Edgar believed that Jesus' time in India helped him develop a more comprehensive view of spirituality that transcended cultural and religious boundaries. Next up, Persia. Edgar's readings also indicate that Jesus traveled to Persia, modern-day Iran, where he studied with Zoroastrian priests. Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions, emphasized the duality of good and evil, the importance of individual choice, and the ultimate triumph of good. These teachings likely influenced Jesus' own understanding of morality, free will, and the cosmic struggle between light and darkness. In Persia, Jesus would have been exposed to Zoroastrian mysticism and esoteric knowledge. The Zoroastrian priests, known as Magi, were renowned for their wisdom and prophetic abilities. Their influence may have helped Jesus develop his own prophetic gifts and deepen his connection to the divine. This mystical knowledge would later be reflected in his teachings about the kingdom of God and the ultimate destiny of humanity. Then, on to Egypt. Egypt, with its ancient and highly developed spiritual traditions, was another key destination in Jesus' travels. According to Edgar, Jesus spent time studying in the temples of Egypt, particularly at the Temple of Heliopolis. Here, he would have had access to the wisdom of the ancient Egyptian priests, who were custodians of profound, esoteric knowledge and spiritual practices. The Egyptian temples were centers of learning and initiation into the mysteries of life, death, and the afterlife. Jesus' studies in Egypt would have included sacred geometry, the nature of the soul, and the rituals associated with spiritual transformation and resurrection. These experiences deepened his understanding of eternal life and prepared him for his own journey of sacrifice and resurrection. Edgar believed that Jesus' travels and studies in India, Persia, and Egypt allowed him to synthesize the spiritual wisdom of these diverse cultures. This synthesis enabled Jesus to develop a unique and universal message that transcended the limitations of any single religious tradition. His teachings about love, compassion, forgiveness, and the kingdom of God reflect a blend of Eastern and Western spiritual insights. 
Edgar Cayce passed away on January 3, 1945. Some believe that he even predicted his own death, adding to his mystique. Despite his passing, Edgar's statements about Jesus Christ remain highly popular and influential. His unique perspectives continue to inspire many, leading to numerous books and discussions about his insights. Even today, Edgar Cayce's views on Christ are a subject of fascination and study, showcasing the lasting impact of his work. What do you think about Edgar Cayce's claims about Jesus? Let us know in the comments and subscribe to our channel for more.